wanna say, but I can't speak. I'm paralyzed when you're next to me. Running on dreams, cause I can't see how this could be reality. You're holding me close, but I don't know. Do I let you in? Do I let it show? All of my fears and all of these ghosts are the only thing. Do just once what others say you can't do, and you'll never pay attention to their limitations again. And that quote was by James Cook. Welcome back to Morning Coffee with Rick Alexander. I'm at Rick Alexander underscore and at Lionheart Radio on Instagram. That soothing acoustic music as always was provided by the super talented Brittany Taylor, and she's at Barbell Brittany on Instagram. All right, let's get into it. Have you ever seen the show Lucifer? So for the record, it's kind of a ridiculous premise. Essentially, the devil has returned to Earth after being sentenced to an eternity of running hell, and he decides to stay in L.A. and live out life there. Well, actually, I guess that part probably makes more sense than I'm giving it credit for, but what I wanted to talk about today is the way that that show actually portrays hell. Basically, when someone dies, if they go to hell, they relive the worst experience of their life over and over for eternity. Often, it's a scenario where they acted malevolently towards someone else or they blame themselves for something. For example, maybe they found themselves in a situation with a chance to help someone and they didn't for selfish reasons and they blame themselves for the actions they took. In one example, a professor found himself in a car accident and him and a student were trapped in a burning car. Acting out of instinct, the professor grabbed his life's work and ran, leaving the kid who was trapped to die in the car. When that same professor dies and goes to hell later in the show, they show him reliving that exact scenario over and over on repeat. That sounds like hell to me. What's interesting is what the show alludes to over time. What you find out is that every person in hell has put themselves there by their own volition. Their conscience won't allow them to actually leave even though they are free to at any time. They allude to the fact that although billions of people are free to leave hell, not a single one of them does. Their minds never allow them to leave the hell that they're living in, and so they just continue to repeat the same scenario. I'm going to say that one more time for effect. Their minds never allow them to leave the hell that they're living in, and so they just continue to repeat the same scenario. What struck me about this show is that for all of its ridiculous plotline, that has got to be the most profoundly accurate representation of our lives that I've ever heard. We have these stories in our heads about what we deserve, and then we spend the rest of our lives living out that same loop, feeling as though we are a victim of the circumstance, and even if that situation is pure hell, we keep ourselves there, never realizing that the door isn't locked. You probably feel like there are many areas in your life that you can't change right now, when in fact, you're just experiencing the limits of your programming and not your capabilities. I've done a ton of shows based on programming and the way that we perceive scenarios when we're growing up, specifically when we're developing. But I think regardless of how you were raised, what you were told about yourself and your capabilities or anything else, you just have to realize at some point that you are in your own way. The door isn't locked. It might have been when you were young. You might have been in scenarios that limited your mobility and what you can do. But now in 2019, that mobility is limited by one thing, and that is your ability to shift in your perspective. What I think is worth highlighting and what the show is illustrating is that the walls that we put up in our minds are legitimately just as real as any physical wall that we might be up against in life. When your belief system about something is set in stone, so aren't your options, plain and simple. And so you should very seriously explore your beliefs about all of the areas in your life that you feel like you might be coming up short. For lots of us, it's the way we feel about money. For others, it's what they believe about their quality of life, and so they accept maybe less than they deserve, or they should. There's so many ways that all of our beliefs wall us into a less than ideal scenario or life. Parts of life feel like they're off limits to us, when in fact, that is a reflection of what we've been told and what we've witnessed as quote-unquote true, and not what we actually are capable of. The most blatant example of this that I often use with clients is one of an Olympic athlete. Because if you grew up with parents who are Olympic athletes, then the Olympics are something that penetrate your thought as a possibility for the future. For the 99% of the rest of us, it isn't even a remote possibility. Now, while recognizing how much of that scenario is actually genetically based, 
We should also come to appreciate how many people are subjugating themselves and not allowing themselves to dream because of what they've perceived as possible. The point here isn't about how many of us could be Olympic athletes because I'm not speaking in technical terms, but more broadly speaking, how many of us aren't pursuing our calling based on this same logic. How many books aren't being written, how many businesses aren't being started, and how many adventures aren't being had, not because we aren't capable of producing them or going on them, but because we don't personally feel worthy of those things. Getting back to our original scenario, what life aren't you getting to live because you are perpetually living in loops based on what you think you deserve? We date different versions of the same person, we start and abandon projects, we live in constant drama, all the while believing all of this is the way that life works. In order to get around this, you have to change your thinking, not about the scenario you are in, but about the way this entire thing works in general. Now, I'm not naive enough to dole out advice such as, you know, change your thinking, change your life, because I know how extremely difficult that is. But honestly, is there anything more important than that? You don't deserve to be in hell, but to be honest, you also don't deserve to live in mediocrity. You deserve the things that you want, but often that starts with identifying the very limited belief that you have around what you think that you can't achieve. And honestly, if there are areas of your life that aren't what you want them to be, and you don't believe that you have a limited belief around that thing, you will spend the rest of this life for sure living in the same hellish feedback loop as the billions that have come before all along never realizing that the door isn't, nor was it, ever locked. All right, I love you guys. Little fire and brimstone on a Wednesday. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow on Lionheart Radio. I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Well, I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Said I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need. And if I share with you my story, would you share your dollar with me? Bad times are coming and I reap what I done sow. Hey, hey. Well, let me tell you. inside the bottle maybe it's inside the bottle I had some good old buddies myself.